Let's talk now about base software measures, that is, those measures that are collected immediately on uh, the entities and are uh, meant to be aggregated using measurement function to build uh, the quality measures. In general, we have uh, three main areas that uh, we can measure. We can measure time, uh, we can measure size, and we can uh, count elements uh, items of course there are several variation of size uh, count and time let's start with uh, size we can count the size of uh, uh, computing element in terms of uh, functional size it is uh, the, the amount of functions that are required uh, from a, a software product or that the software product is delivering the program size it is the size of, of the code, the size of the resources that are used, and the size in terms of operating procedure steps. Let's start from the first possible measurement of size, that is the functional size. Um, functional size um, can be measured in different ways. Uh, one of the most widespread ways of measuring functional size is by uh, function point. Function point were first defined in the 70s uh, and then uh, they were standardized using different uh, computing methods uh, in uh, six, uh, five different uh, um, standards, uh, ISO standards. So we have uh, um, the cosmic method, the IFPUG method, uh, the Mark II method, the NESMA and the FISMA method. These are essentially based on the same uh, concept of function point, but uh, uh, function points are computed using different criteria. Another alternative way of measuring functional size, if uh, uh, requirements are defined in uh, terms of use cases, is by uh, means of use case points. But let's focus on uh, how we can compute uh, function point, for instance, using the cosmic approach. The basic idea is that uh, the function, uh, the, the software, interacts uh, with its user across a boundary and uh, with uh, some storage across another boundary. So uh, there are two boundaries of the software system. On one side there are the users, on the other there are the storage. Um, anytime a, a user uh, interacts with the system, that's uh, typically a uh, requirement. So we have a set of uh, uh, interaction with uh, the system and uh, um, any time uh, we have uh, an interaction, typically there is a movement of data uh, to or from uh, the, uh, the system and there is a manipulation of data. Movement of data typically uh, can be entry or exit if they are um, from or towards uh, the, the users and write and read if they are intended to be uh, towards or from uh, the storage. In general, we, we mention uh, data movement considering data groups, that is a, a sort of objects that are communicated across the boundary of the system. And uh, every time a user starts some function, um, it triggers an, a set of processes, a set of interaction that uh, can be conducted uh, across the boundaries. Uh, essentially, counting uh, the complexity of interaction, the number of interaction, typically give us a measure in terms of function points. Another way of measuring size is uh, by means of uh, measuring the size of a program. Uh, the most intuitive way of measuring uh, the size uh, of a program is by uh, counting the lines of code. It is very intuitive. Uh, the problem is that uh, there are several possible alternatives. So what do we include or exclude in, uh, in the count? Empty lines are included or not in the count? Uh, whenever we have lines that are very complex, for instance, uh, we have several instructions on a single line, they count as a single line or they count as multiple line. 
For this reason, often uh, lines of code are replaced by uh, what is called uh, NCSS, non-commented source statement, where we count not the lines of code but the statements, and we exclude, of course, empty lines and um, comment statement. So. Um, whenever we have uh, multiple instructions on the line, we count the, the, the statement that are uh, on the line, not the line itself. Otherwise, we count the, line, the number of lines. Uh, we typically include uh, executable statement. Uh, we have to decide whether to uh, include uh, data declarations. So, for instance, if you declare a data structure, is that part uh, uh, of, uh, of the count or not? Uh, comments are typically excluded, but comments might be useful in terms of uh, uh, understanding the, 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 the overall complexity of writing the code. Uh, also, compiler directive might be included or excluded in, in the count, and so these are uh, variations that uh, may change how we compute uh, the line of code in terms of size. So, in general, uh, line of code is very easy to understand. Um, it is uh, quite complex to have a very precise measure because we have to, to carefully select uh, different uh, aspects, but it is easy, uh, quite easy to get an approximate measure. So, for instance, if you have a command line, you can use the uh, word count uh, utility, uh, counting the line, and you take all the uh, source uh, file, the source uh, C files, and that's uh, the number. It is very widely used. Uh, the problem is that uh, we have to be careful when we measure, for instance, productivity of programmers in terms of line of code because uh, the programmers might alter their behavior just to produce more line of code than actually needed. When we talk about time, uh, again, here we have several types of uh, uh, time that we, uh, we want to measure. Um, system operation or execution time, they are quite different. Uh, and they are different from the user time. It is the user that the time that is taken by the user to perform some activity. Or we can have effort. It is the time used by people to perform some task. Uh, or we can have a time interval. Uh, when we have uh, uh, to deal with time, uh, we can have several different types. So we have real time units. It is. Uh, physical time, uh, wall clock time, if you if you wish. We can have uh, the time unit based on uh, the, the computing unit, so we have CPU time. And of course, if we have multiple uh, CPUs or multiple cores inside the same CPU, um, the time must be counted for each uh, unit. Um, we can have uh, scheduled time. Uh, of course, we count uh, the typical eight hours per day, uh, five hour, five days per week, uh, uh, so 40 hours per week, uh, month, uh, uh, years, uh, we exclude the vacation and so on. Uh, we can have a component time. So we, we just uh, count the time uh, that a single component or unit has worked. So for instance, if we have a component either hardware or software that is uh, uh, just used uh, in uh, specific occasions, uh, we count the time when that unit is actually active. And then we have uh, system time, where we do not look at a single component, but we look at the overall system uh, composed, with, uh, composed of several different uh, units. And so we overall consider a single time for all the components. When we talk about effort, we uh, can look at individual effort. It is uh, the, the amount of time that a, a person devoted to a specific task. Uh, in general, remember that uh, the effort uh, have to deal with the fact that there are a given number of hours per day. Uh, or we have uh, task effort, it is uh, the, the cumulative time of all the individuals that worked on the same task for uh, all the day they worked uh, on it. And of course, uh, when you measure the uh, time uh, computing your uh, task, 
uh, in the project uh, that you are carrying on, uh, in general, you report your task effort, you collect your individual effort, but in the end, you report your overall task effort. Third category of uh, um, base measures, um, they are typically called quality measure elements, uh, are the count, where we count items. Detect, uh, we, we count the faults, uh, inconsistency, we count uh, uh, attempts, uh, we count uh, strokes, uh, we count scores. A, a specific type of count is uh, uh, the so-called McCabe cyclomatic complexity, where we compute the uh, complexity of a flow. It is, um, if we transform a program into what is called a control flow graph, where every node is uh, composed of a, a sequence of instructions that do not include any uh, condition or jump, uh, we can build a graph where every set of instructions is connected to another based on uh, condition, conditional instruction. Uh, the psychomatic complexity or McCabe uh, complexity is essentially the number of uh, linear independent paths that can be found in this uh, control flow graph. Uh, so in general, um, if we have a graph that is strongly connected, uh, we have uh, the number of edges uh, minus the number of nodes uh, plus one. So, for instance, uh, here we have um, a possible control flow graph where we have uh, a set of instructions followed by an if with two uh, branches. Uh, here we have uh, three branches, so this might be um, a, a switch statement. We have three different branches, they uh, join in node i, and so we have a set of instruction, and then we uh, join again uh, in uh, node M, where the other branch uh, that contains another if with two different branches uh, join in the end. So overall here we have five different uh, independent uh, paths. In practice, uh, when we have to compute the cyclomatic complexity for, uh, for a program, we typically start at one, uh, we iterate on all the statement and we add one for every um, instruction or statement that the increment complexity so uh, the typically uh, we have if for uh, while case catch but also we can add uh, one for the throw instruction where we have a branch outside the uh, we jump outside the, the, the statement or we have an end or an or or a conditional statement all, every time we encounter these uh, keywords or operator, we typically uh, add one to the complexity. Uh, what is uh, um, cyclomatic complexity for? It is useful for uh, determining uh, um, the, the level of complexity of code and therefore um, whether a code is too complex to be maintained. And so uh, it is possible to define uh, several thresholds that allow us to identify whether a program uh, is too complex to be maintained and so it is uh, a risk to have this kind of program or uh, a program is small enough and so it's manageable and can be easily um, maintained. A possible uh, classification of threshold is to have um, programs that are below uh, program, sorry, function because uh, com computational com um, uh, complexity um, uh, is measured typically on single function. Uh, we have low risk uh, if we have a, a, a complexity that is below 10. Uh, moderate risk if it is between 11 and 20, we have high risk if, is, uh, if it is between 21 and 50, and uh, it is uh, typically uh, very high, unstable and very risky if we have uh, values uh, above 50. Remember that 50 means that you have the equivalent of 50 um, possible uh, if inside the same function or method. Remember that uh, when we talk about uh, McCabe uh, complexity, um, uh, while it is uh, very well defined in terms of uh, uh, mathematical foundation, that is uh, the, the number of independent graph or the, control, or the path in the control graph, um, it focuses on 
code complexity alone, so uh, data complexity is not considered in this measure. Uh, of course, you can move part of the complexity that you have in the code into data. And so that part of the complexity is not uh, computed uh, by this measure. And also, um, psychromatic complexity typically is strongly uh, correlated with the, the line of code. So here is um, an example of a, a set of uh, program uh, and how they correlate uh, with um, psychromatic complexity and how they correlate with uh, executable uh, lines. And you see that there is a pretty strong uh, correlation of uh, psychromatic complexity and uh, line of code. So uh, probably it is much easier to count the line of code rather than uh, the psychromatic complexity. Uh, there are also other measures that uh, allow uh, the computation of uh, complexity in the design of a, of a system, typically for object-oriented uh, languages. A set of uh, such metrics has been defined by Chidamar and Camber in a, a landmark paper uh, from 1994, and uh, they propose a set of uh, um, measures for uh, classes. Um, one is uh, the weighted method for classes, uh, essentially counts the number of methods in each class, and here again uh, you can define a threshold about which uh, a class is too complex. The number of children, that is the number of immediate subclasses of a class, the depth of inheritance trees, uh, the, the, the maximum distance from the, the, the root of the inheritance trees and, and the uh, leaf classes, uh, coupling, be coupling between uh, uh, object classes, that is the number of uh, uh, classes to which a class is coupled, that is uh, uh, for which uh, uh, a class call a method or hold uh, a reference. Uh, then we have the response for a class. Uh, this is essentially the, the, the sum of the cardinalities of the method in the class uh, and uh, the remote methods that are called by method of the classes. So uh, you sum not only the method in the class, that is the weighted method for a class, but also uh, the methods that are called by those uh, methods. Uh, and then you have uh, another method that is called lack of cohesion in methods. Um, lack of cohesion in method is uh, P minus Q, uh, if P is greater than Q, where P is the pairs of methods that do not share attributes, uh, meaning that uh, do not share attributes that they are access to. And Q uh, is the pairs of methods that uh, uh, actually share attributes. So if two uh, methods, uh, we, we can take all the possible pairs uh, uh, of methods. If two methods share an attribute, they increase the Q count, while if they do not share uh, attributes, they, include, they increment the P uh, count. Uh, of course, uh, the more uh, the attributes share the attributes, uh, that is, the access to common attributes, the more uh, we can consider those methods uh, similar, at least cohesive. Uh, the more we have methods that are com using completely different subset of attributes, the more uh, the methods are not uh, cohesive. That is, um, in principle, we could split the class in two different classes, each having its own subset of attributes. Um, what are the pros and cons of uh, this set of metrics? Uh, um, uh, they, are, they have no theoretical validation, so there are not many studies that uh, actually prove that uh, high value for those uh, methods uh, typically uh, impact the quality of the program, uh, more effects, uh, more difficulty in maintaining and so on. Uh, and there is uh, uh, no either empirical validation of this study that in practice see that uh, there is uh, some effort. Some, some methods are uh, quite difficult to be computed, so we need to have uh, all the details uh, of the code and we need to analyze it. 
These were the uh, basic uh, measures that can be computed directly and that can be aggregated uh, to compute quality measures. That is a measure that can be used uh, as the basis for indicators of the quality of a product.